We begin now with a look, a look at school walkouts happening this morning at schools across South Florida. Students are out showing their support for gun control legislation and their frustration with Florida lawmakers' decision to not take up legislation that would ban the sale of assault weapons like the AR-15 used in the attack at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Walkouts like this are expected to continue throughout the day in South Florida. Hello and welcome. I'm Scott Dennis. Thank you for joining us. In the wake of that Stoneman Douglas High School shooting, President Trump is now looking at some new possible nationwide gun restrictions, all while students from South Florida school are still demanding action after the Florida House refused to discuss a ban on assault weapons yesterday. ABC's Tara Palmieri has more from Washington. Parkland students traveled on buses nearly 500 miles to be told nothing can be done. At the Florida State Capitol, legislators voted against even considering a ban on semi-automatic rifles. Some students were shaken by the blow. It was a big punch in the gut because the, it's, it'll, it'll be a week tomorrow since this happened, and already there's another roadblock in front of us. This is not about Democrats, this is not about Republicans, this isn't left or right. This is a movement for humanity, for safety, for keeping our citizens alive. But they're not giving up. These students who survived the massacre at Parkland will have 40 to 60 meetings today, including with the state attorney general, the Senate president, and the Speaker of the House. They're also expected to meet with the governor. They're vowing to storm Washington next. In D.C., there seems to be momentum for modest changes. The president announced yesterday that he proposed a directive on banning bump stocks. I signed a memorandum directing the attorney general to propose regulations to ban all devices that turn legal weapons into machine guns. But bump stocks were used in the Las Vegas shooting, not at Parkland. President Trump also signaled his support for a Senate bill that fixes instant background checks, tweeting, whether we are Republican or Democrat, we must now focus on strengthening background checks. The students seem to understand that change rarely happens overnight. We're not hoping for magical results. President Trump will host a listening session this afternoon with survivors of the Parkland massacre, Columbine, and Newtown. Yesterday, White House spokesperson Sarah Sanders said the president would not rule out supporting an age limit on gun purchases. Tara Palmieri, ABC News, Washington. Here in the Suncoast, students are resuming normal activities at Southeast High School in Manatee County after the campus was locked down after school officials found a threat on the wall of a bathroom on campus. ABC 7's Marla Williams joins us live at Southeast High with an update. Marla? Good afternoon, Scott. You know, the lockdown here at Southeast High School has been lifting. As you can see right behind me at the school, parents are just lined up trying to get their kids checked out of school this afternoon. This comes after a lockdown went into place a little after 9 o'clock this morning after officials here at Southeast High School say they found a note printed and written on a girl's bathroom wall threatening to shoot up the school at 1045 this morning. And after that, the lockdown went into effect, having the school completely locked down and parents outside just wondering what exactly was going on inside of that school. And that's where uh, Manatee County Sheriff's deputies were inside investigating and also interviewing any possible suspects. And so uh, right now that lockdown down is has been lifted this afternoon. Um, this is just a few miles away from Manatee High School where I was this morning and that school also had a threat uh, yesterday and that's where security measures are being heightened and also increased at Manatee High School. Um, so far investigators are continuing to investigate these threats right here on the Sun Coast. We will bring you an update and bring you the latest out of both investigations once we learn more. Reporting live in Manatee County, I'm Marla Spence for ABC 7. You your Suncoast News. All right, Marla, thank you so much. In the wake of the Parkland school shooting, Florida law enforcement leaders are looking at what they can do to prevent this from happening again. Some things they are considering arming school employees, expanding background checks, and revamping the Baker Act law to keep guns from people who have mental health issues. Governor Rick Scott's office organized workshops in response to the school shooting that left 17 people dead. It's much better if there's going to be a gun on campus that it's with a trained person to stop the shooter. The only thing worse than us having to have a shootout on a campus is us not being able to stop the shooter on the campus. The public, I, I feel personally, is not going to tolerate anything less than security 
for their school now. And I'm not talking long-term solutions or legislative solutions that I think we have to work towards because there are many, but I mean tomorrow. The officers also talked about gaping loopholes in the Baker Act. Right now, officers cannot take guns away from people who make violent threats, as well as those who are released from mental health facilities. Another major focus of these workshops is mental health screenings, improved integration of data, coordination of care and early screening, and assessment are the top recommendations of mental health experts. Nicholas Cruz, the gunman charged with 17 counts of premeditated murder, had a lengthy history of mental health issues. And the FBI received at least two reports he posed a threat to others. What is it about the young males in their development or external factors or media or society that drives them to do these unspeakable, horrific things? We have to be careful, I think, not to inadvertently contribute to the notion that people with mental illness are, are dangerous. I mean, that's something we're trying to get away from all these decades and centuries. Experts also say identifying and treating every would-be school shooter like Cruz may not put an end to tragedies like the one last week in Parkland, but early assessments can significantly cut down the possibilities. And happening tonight, the concerns from Stone, Stoneman Douglas students will be heard by state leaders and people all over the country for that matter. CNN will host a town hall meeting at the BB&T Center in South Florida starting at 9 o'clock tonight. You can watch the live coverage on our website at mysuncoast.com. We will be streaming on our site and our Facebook page in the event's entirety. In other news today, a Sarasota City Commissioner and the City Manager got into a heated argument over Moat Marine Lab's plan to build a new aquarium at Nathan Benderson Park. The announcement of plans to build it outside the Sarasota City limits caused Commissioner Hagen Brody to question City Manager Tom Barwin. Brody criticized Barwin for not intervening in, and doing more to keep the aquarium from leaving its current spot on City Island. Boat Marine plans to expand its operation on City Island into a full research facility while moving its aquarium close to I-75. Also last night, Sarasota City Commissioners took the first step toward banning a controversial therapy on minors called conversion therapy, or as its critics call it, an attempt to pray the gay away. ABC 7's Ray Collins joins us now with details of that vote. Ray? Scott, Wikipedia describes conversion therapy as a way to change an individual's sexual orientation using therapeutic methods. Several states and over a dozen Florida cities have already banned conversion therapy on minors. Last night, by a 3-2 vote, commissioners voted to draft an ordinance that would make Sarasota next. Now, not everybody is against it. Free speech groups and libertarians say the government shouldn't get involved, and some advocates say conversion therapy has a place in some cases. Now, we recently talked to a former conversion therapy patient via Skype in Gainesville about his five years of counseling that began when he was a teenager. I was a part of a very conservative uh, evangelical church that being gay was wrong, was a sin. I went to that therapy and, and my hopes were in being able to be, be normal, be like the other, the other guys. The, the therapy is unrealistic. You cannot change who someone genuinely is. In his case, he got married for 10 years, had two kids, and finally came to terms with being gay. He now is a huge opponent to conversion therapy. So last night was the first vote to adopt an ordinance banning the practice with minors in Sarasota. Scott. All right, great. Thank you so much. Let's get a check on our weather. And, of course, the story for days now has been uh, record heat. And we're not only breaking records, we're kind of obliterating these records. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yesterday was remarkable. I mean, usually it, in, in this month, in the month of February, you, you know, can break a record by one or two degrees. Yeah. But uh, five degrees and, and being the warmest uh, day ever in the entire month, not just the day. And in some cases, some of the records across the state of Florida, they were the warmest day in the entire winter season. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, just uh, going back 100 years, I mean, yeah. uh, really a warm streak that continues on even today. And we have a chance of beating today's record, too. It's at 87, our, uh, our, our, our daytime high temperature record today. And you know what? We, we, we're going to come really close to that, and I suspect we'll beat it. Sarasota Bay webcam shows some pretty quiet conditions across the Sun Coast. A lot of blue sky out there.
few fair weather clouds, but not many. All the sunshine is going to help really boost our temperatures today. And uh, we're already starting to see that. I mean, we've, we've gone from temperatures near the 70 degree mark to 81 right now. And uh, only a few fair weather clouds way out in Gulf waters. And below that, a little bit of false echo caused by some chaff. But otherwise, we're looking at rain free skies today. Nothing to break the heat. A good strong wind out of the east or southeast to keep the sea breeze pinned close to the coast. And uh, not that much moisture in the atmosphere to slow or retard the heating all that much. So I don't think that 88 degrees is unrealistic. Uh, we're looking at a 7 p.m. temperature of about 78 and a midnight temperature of about 72. Wake up tomorrow morning with, again, pretty fair skies and not much in the way of any overnight weather problems. So when will this warm streak end? We'll talk about that in just a few minutes, Scott. John, thank you. New at noon, Billy Graham, America's most prominent Christian leader, has died. Graham was 99 years old. ABC's Karen Travers has a look back at his life. Doubt about my own calling. For William Franklin God Graham Jr., the message was always clear. Choose Jesus Christ as your Lord and Master and Savior. He began delivering that message in 1938. Over the next six decades, he preached the gospel to more than 100 million people in 85 countries on every continent, to everyone from the poor to the powerful. Billy Graham met with every U.S. president since Harry Truman. Some called him the president's preacher. Ronald Reagan presented him with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And three former presidents, Carter, Clinton, and Bush, helped dedicate the Billy Graham Library in Charlotte, where the size of the crowd compelled Graham to muse about his own passing. I feel like I've been attending my own funeral. <laughs> Born the son of North Carolina dairy farmers, it was not always apparent to the young man that he was being called to the ministry. I didn't like to go to church. I didn't like to read the Bible. I didn't like to pray. I didn't like any of those things. But that changed when, at the age of 16, he attended a revival. He can forgive your sins. He can make you a new person. His wife of more than 50 years, Ruth McHugh Bell, was a partner in his efforts, making this log cabin home for the traveling evangelist, a home where they would raise five children, all of whom followed their father into ministry. After six decades of public preaching, Graham held what he called his final crusade in Queens, New York, the same place they had begun in 1957. And though the messenger had clearly changed with the years, his message had not. The greatest need in the world today is a transformation of human nature to make us love instead of hate. As for his own eternal destiny, Graham made no assumptions. I'm just an ordinary sinner that's been saved by the grace of God. So I know that if I die today, I'll be in heaven tomorrow. Karen Travers, ABC News, Washington. Still to come in your Suncoast News this afternoon. Flu season we know is still in full swing for us, but what about our dogs? We'll have an update on that. Plus, what beach just jumped over Siesta Key for the title of America's Best Beach? That story coming up. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? <laughs> B, console her. Don't worry, sweetie. This is going to happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. I just had a very educational ride with Nina. Did you learn anything? Where do I begin? So all this stuff goes into a safety check. Yep. It's a long list. It's important stuff. Test the smoke detector. Yep. Check the breaker box. Yep. Meter the GFCIs. Ground fault circuit interrupters. Why do that? <laughs> Call 888 Sparky. Minnie, you make it look easy. Thanks, but don't do it yourself. Who's your guy? They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. We promise we're more than a dealership. We're a destination with a movie theater, massage room, aquarium, cafe, and more. We promise to give you top dollar for your trade, even if you don't buy from us. And if you do, we promise you the best deal. Bring us any competitor's ad, and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com.
Sarasota Opera's 2018 Winter Opera Festival is here, featuring Puccini's Manon Lescaut, Bizet's Carmen, Bellini's Norma, and Dalbert's rarely heard Tieflant. For more information, go to sarasotaopera.org. Our nation's servicemen and women show great courage and leadership both on and off the battlefield. When they transition to civilian life, they can apply the skills and values they learned in the military to the workplace. That's why the Coalition to Salute America's Heroes is urging employers everywhere to be smart, bet on a vet. Hiring a veteran is also a great way to show your appreciation for them. To learn more, call 1-888-44-SALUTE. ABC 7 News at 7, weeknights. Now your ABC 7 first alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. So looking at some of the great pictures that were sent in to us at pixatmysuncoast.com from Jack Waters in the Comus, the setting sun yesterday. Absolutely beautiful, filling the sky with those gorgeous sunset colors, as is this one. Susan Humphreys from Terracia sent that shot in. And our old friend Fred Seeger, a frequent contributor, sitting in the KC Key photo. Nice shot there as well. I think tonight's sunset will be very similar to any of those that you just saw as we have fair amount of clear sky out there and only a few clouds to reflect those golden colors of the setting the sun should be pretty 81 degrees in Bradenton already same thing Lakewood Ranch 82 in Sarasota and Venice Northport coming in at 81 Punta Gorda already at 83 81 in Arcadia Wachula Mayaca along about the cold spot cold spot at 78 degrees with that onshore wind flow that they're starting to establish there. Current conditions 82 with a dew point of 66. Dew point has lowered a couple of degrees since this morning. Um, we have a little bit more of an easterly component to that southeast wind that's helping to lower the dew point a, a little bit. Uh, still comfortable enough. I mean, it's not bad out there. If the dew point and temperature are that far apart, feels pretty good. Relative humidity only 58%. A little bit of cloud cover out there from time to time. That southeast wind blowing briskly, keeping that sea breeze pinned close to the coast, not allowing it to efficiently do its cooling job, even though water temperatures are still on the uh, cooler side. So with all that heating, with the sea breeze kept close to the coast, with some fairly clear skies out there, and with a sinking dome of high pressure sitting in the Atlantic, we're on our way to another record-setting day, I should imagine, or at least close to it. A little bit of chaff out in the Gulf waters there. Military exercise, not real rain. The air way too dry aloft to support any kind of rain showers around here today. By 3 p.m. we'll hit 88 degrees. If we do, we'll, we'll have broken the record for the day. Once again, third day in a row. 78 degrees by 7 p.m. By midnight, we'll be at 72. And when you wake up tomorrow morning, we'll be pretty close, I think, to the 70 degree mark. We've got 66 here for 7 a.m. tomorrow. I don't know, that might be a little on the cool side. We're looking at uh, the hour by hour forecast across the region, and you'll notice the winds generally out of the east, except right along the immediate coast, where we might develop a little bit of a shallow sea breeze, but it'll be kept so close to the coastline that its cooling effect really will not be felt by most of us as we climb up into the upper 80s. Then this evening, falling back down into the 70s, should be a beautiful sunset and a lovely night time. And then as we head into the overnight, we'll be in the uh, near 70 degree range when you wake up tomorrow morning. So. West wind developing, about five knots. Switching back to the east during the overnight at 10 knots. Nice day for boating. Plenty of uh, nice, calm conditions for the most part. We're looking at the worst uh, light chop out there. 88 degrees today, tomorrow 86, and uh, again on Friday, a warm day. We'll start to cool it off a little bit as we head into the weekend. Still, though, above average by a significant amount. And as we head into next week, maybe we'll factor in some much needed rain. Back to you. Okay, John, thank you. In HealthSmart, veterinarians are now having to restrict medication on pets to prevent their owners from taking them. Vets are now required to limit opioid prescriptions to just five days. And in some states, there are now legal steps in place to prevent this type of abuse. Here in Florida, though, vets are to use their best judgment. 
we've always kind of tried to pay attention to how we're dispensing controlled drugs and just making sure that nothing kind of seems suspicious when we're filling them. But I don't think that we were um, legally required to do quite as much as, as what we've done just in practice. In school, vets are trained to look for red flags in an owner that's looking to refill their pet's medication. They're advised to look for a drug-free, safe alternative to treat the injured animal if they do not trust that owner. And we're learning some new details that Suncoast dog owners will be excited to hear, and it's all about canine influenza. ABC 7's Stephanie Webb is here with the details. Stephanie? Well, Scott, we are still in the thick of flu season for all of us humans, but we have some good news for dog owners. According to a local vet, canine influenza is on the decline here on the Sun Coast. But how do you know if you should still get your dog vaccinated? You always have to think about the dog and their exposure. So if they are one of those dogs that can be around a lot of other dogs, meaning boarding, grooming, dog parks, then we would recommend it because it is in Florida. Now, some of the symptoms of canine influenza can include coughing, sneezing, even eye discharge, the very same symptoms that you often find in humans. Scott. All right, Stephanie, thank you so much. Let's get over to the kitchen now and check in with ABC 7 Culinary Director Judy Gallagher, who has a guest today, a special guest, our good friend, Chef Jamil from Michael's on East. Hi, guys. You know, it's always a great time when Jamil's in the kitchen. It's even better when I'm, I, it's the day that I'm here with you. <laughs> yeah. We're promoting a special event that's coming up. Tell us about the event. We're going to do a, a Make-A-Wish uh, interactive uh, lunch, uh, which is a great, one of the best uh, uh, nonprofit uh, thing that we do at Michael's. This is our eighth year. Incredible. And so, it's, you know, we're very proud of it. So it's a, a great cause. And, I mean, for the kids and the family, it's one of the best thing that we can do there. So. You you do so much over there. And tell us about, is this one of the dishes that you're going to prepare? It's going to be one of the dishes. We're going to be, you know, offering South Africa. Yep. So we have a, a beautiful place at Michael and um, Terry go for the Connoisseur Club at Landalozzi. And even though this is almost like an Italian dish, but it's actually very, very, very popular at this resort. So it's basically gnocchi with, uh, with uh, blue cheese cream, some mm. tomato basil and fried basil. And we so. will get started cooking in just a few minutes. So fire up that pan, Jamil. We'll be right back. Need more space in your place? The More Space Place can help. With Murphy beds that disappear to reveal a home office, living room, or den. Custom closets with designated areas for your shoes, bags, wardrobe, and accessories. Custom built entertainment centers, garage storage systems, and more. The More Space Place has three showrooms next to Sunny's on US 41 South in Sarasota, on Lakewood Ranch Boulevard just south of State Route 64 in Bradenton, and on Tamiami Trail next to Panera Bread in Port Charlotte. Put more space in your place at the More Space Place. Thousands of award-winning Honda Civics are on sale for $169 a month during the Honda President's Day Sales Event. You made Civic the best-selling compact car in America. Drive one today for just $169 a month or save thousands on your Civic with 0.9% financing. Civic, a KBB.com best buy for less than the competition. Only $169 a month or 0.9% this week at your local Honda dealer. Honda, I like it. Oh, yeah, I like it. It's been about a month, and I can honestly say I've seen the change in me. I went from being a depressed girl who didn't want help to this happy, caring girl who loves helping other people. I just really hope that people that went through what I went through get the help that they need because their story is important and they are loved. Thank you so much for everything. I just need a second. Is your weight holding you back and affecting your health? Did you see this? Hmm? Your cousin had a heart attack. Really? Excess weight or obesity can be serious, but you can do something about it. Visit yourweightmatters.org. Download the free toolkit to prepare you to speak with a health care provider. Your weight does matter. Accept the challenge and take charge today. Visit yourweightmatters.org. Coast Guard, we are taking on water. The United States Coast Guard. They secure our ports and waterways, protect our environment, keep drugs away from our kids, and save lives. It's dangerous work. And in times of triumph or tragedy, 
the Coast Guard Foundation answers the call to support Coast Guard members and their families. Learn more at CoastGuardFoundation.org. ABC7 is the most watched, most trusted news source on the Sun Coast, and we owe it all to you, our loyal viewers. Thank you for making us number one. But this year, it is not Siesta Beach. Clearwater Beach grabbing the top spot in the TripAdvisor Traveler's Choice Awards. Siesta fell to number two this year. The Sunshine State has six of the top ten beaches on this year's list. Trip of, TripAdvisor says soft sand, clear waters, and balmy temperatures are common threads among Traveler's Choice Award winning beaches. All right, back to the kitchen now. Judy is with Chef Jamil from Michael's on East. Hey, Jamil, let's get started. So, you know, this is a very simple dish. Once you start get the gnocchis ready to go, which you already have them right here, um, you're going to start with the cream. A lot of people like to put water and salt and, you know, kind of like get the gnocchis like that. Mm -hmm. I like to cook them actually in the sauce that we're going to be yeah, making. Yeah, infuse all infuse that Infuse all the additions and then you get all that uh, starch coming out of the gnocchis, out, you know, uh, coming out of the gnocchi and stuff like that. So what I started right here, I just started a heavy cream at 40%. A lot of people, you Perfect. know. Perfect. So 36% is a little too heavy, but we're going to go to 40% So because okay. you're going to have a lot of starches and you don't want it to get too, too clogged, thick. too thick. Mm -hmm. So right here, I got some cream ready to go um, on the thing. And then I got a nonstick pan. Here and the only reason I use this right here because I don't want the gnocchi to start sticking into uh, the pan. Good point. So Again, with the amount of starch, with the amount of the starch, gnocchi gnocchis will do that. So okay. right here we're going to start the cream and we're going to add some of the gnocchi. Oh yeah. Right here, so don't be afraid. They're great. Yeah, I'm not afraid. You just keep <laughs> going, Jimmy Ellen. I'm not afraid at all. One thing you want to do here is you don't want to fill it up so much because the cream will, you know, the gnocchi will absorb the cream and then you're going to have a big clump out of it. Okay. But that's why you always have a little cream on the side just so you can do that. Here we got some uh, blue cheese already oh, yeah. crumbled and stuff like that. Now, do you have a certain, do you prefer? Do you like Maytag blue cheese? Does it really Maytag make a difference? Maytag is the best one. Okay, because that's um, what I use at home. Because it's a little creamier in, 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 in a sort of way. Uh, but right here, we, I'm going to do is just put it on top. And now, don't mix it, number one, because you don't ah. want the blue cheese to to start uh, melting when, the, you know, okay. when they start cooking. So you see it's right on top of it. So we have like 20 seconds left. So be perfect. So basically what we're going to let it this head and just let it cook slowly. Okay, and just kind of brush it. And just kind of brush spoon. it and just let it be right there, and then the gnocchi will uh, start well, spinning a little bit. So, as this starts to kind of mm, come all oozy and boozy and wonderful, right. we'll take a break and we'll come back in a few minutes and finish up this marvelous dish. Thanks, Jamil. Oh, you're welcome. SRQ Performance Parts provides parts and accessories from over 300 manufacturers, so you can get that new manifold, carburetor, gasket, bolt kit, or nitrous oxide system fast. We'll help you beat the competition. Call or visit SRQ Performance Parts online today for all your high-performance parts and advice. So Matt told me to meet him at 7 a.m. sharp right here. It is now 7.01 a.m. You think Matt would leave without me? Hey, is Matt here? Uh, long con. Long con. Just missed him. Just missed him. All done. Mr. Sparky guarantees they're on time and the repair is free, so chop, chop. Call 888. Sparky. Matt, you started without me. I finished without you, too. <laughs> Come experience the rugged capability and luxurious comfort of a new Ram truck and get big savings during Ram Truck Month at Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota. Shop the area's largest selection of new Ram trucks. Get the all-new redesigned 2018 Ram Quad Cab for as little as $25,999. Or save big and get $13,300 off a new Ram Crew Cab. Better prices, bigger selection. Go to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota today. Loaded with big laughs, colorful characters, and the songs that made the 20s roar, Bullets Over Broadway is bringing musical theater back with a bang. Your attendance is requested at the Players Center for this wild Broadway musical opening February 21st. Call the Players at 365-2494 or visit the website at theplayers.org. This is one Broadway show that is sure to knock them dead. Invest in Kids is a $7.5 million project to build a new boys and girls club in South Manatee County. I'm Caleb Grimes, and I was a club kid. It's where I learned important life lessons, leadership, integrity, responsibility, and baseball. Thousands of kids attend the Boys and Girls Clubs, and after years of use, their club is slowly falling apart. Help us invest in kids. Make your donation today. 
we're losing exotic animals on a daily basis and the ones that we have in captivity are really the ambassadors for their wild counterparts. I'm Clayton Roser from the Big Cat Habitat and Gulf Coast Sanctuary, housing over 150 exotic animals that needed a great home. And if you love animals, please help them. Do it locally. Support your local no-kill shelters, your local wild animal sanctuaries. Make a difference where you can. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. I will always win this first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. Learn more at nationalguard.com. Coming up with students and parents across the country upset after last week's school shooting in Parkland, will President Trump bend on gun control? Plus, why Oprah Winfrey is now throwing her support behind the March for Our Lives movement. Why a trade and manufacturing war may be brewing between the U.S. and China. You're watching ABC 7 News at 1230. You're looking at a live scene from outside of the White House right now in Washington, D.C., where students are again protesting uh, the gun control efforts in our nation after the shooting in Parkland that left 17 people dead. Our top story this half hour, President Trump now singling his support for some modest new measures related to guns. They include strengthened background checks and a first step towards banning those bump stocks that can turn rifles into machine guns. ABC's Jonathan Carl has the latest. One week after the Parkland school shooting and the growing calls for action. President Trump, please do something. We need them to take action and we want to see some progress. The president made a surprise announcement. Moments ago, I signed a memorandum directing the Attorney General to propose regulations to ban all devices that turn legal weapons into machine guns. The president is directing the Justice Department to draft regulations banning so-called bump stocks, an accessory that was used in the Las Vegas massacre last October. But bump stocks were not used in Parkland. Overnight, the president signaled his support for another modest gun proposal from Capitol Hill, tweeting, whether we are Republican or Democrat, we must now focus on strengthening background checks. Meanwhile, White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders is now walking back the president's tweet that suggested the FBI failed to stop the Florida shooter because, quote, they are spending too much time trying to prove Russian collusion with the Trump campaign. The president doesn't really think that the FBI failed to stop the Parkland shooter because it was too involved with the Russia investigation, does he? I think he was speaking, uh, not necessarily that that is the, the, the cause. I think we all um, have to be aware that the cause of this is that of a deranged individual. Did he mistweet when he said that? Because he's pretty direct. He says, this is not acceptable. They are spending too much time trying to prove Russia collusion. He's making the point that we would like our FBI agencies to to not be focused on something that is clearly a, a hoax in terms of investigating the Trump campaign and its involvement. That was Jonathan Carl reporting from Washington. Here at home, Sarasota County Sheriff Tom Knight wants to increase security at our local schools by putting retired law enforcement and military veterans on campuses. The retired veterans and officers would be armed and spe specifically learn defensive tactics for active shooter scenarios. The added security would allow retired first responders to stay active in the community through the school resource programs. In this community, I have more retired police officers call me and say, what can I do to help? And I have police officers calling me right now who are retired from all over the nation saying, I want to help. I want to help take care of our children in this community. What can I do to help you? Sheriff Knight says the state needs to change legislation to allow retired officers to conceal carry weapons on school campuses. In Tallahassee, a state lawmaker from Tampa fired an aide who emailed a reporter a claim that two survivors of the mass shooting in Florida were actors. Representative Sean Harrison tweeted a comment that he did not agree with the insensitive and inappropriate comments made by aide Benjamin Kelly. Kelly later tweeted it was a mistake to make the claim in an email to the Tampa Bay Times. Harrison said Kelly acted without his knowledge. Governor Rick Scott plans to honor the victims from last week's shooting. He's directing the Florida National Guard to honor the three fallen members of the school's junior ROTC program from Stone and Douglas High School. Uh, Florida Guard members will attend their funeral services. 
Oprah Winfrey is now supporting the March for Our Lives movement. The media mogul is matching George and Amal Clooney's donation of $500,000. On Twitter, she posted a statement saying, quote, These inspiring young people remind me of the Freedom Riders of the 60s, who also said, We've had enough and our voices will be heard. The March for Our Lives movement on March 24th is being organized by students who survived the shooting at Stoneman Douglas High. The march will happen in Washington, D.C. and other cities across the country, including here on the Sun Coast. Here at home, Congressman Tom Rooney fails to show up for a scheduled appearance in Nokomis. The Republican Club met last night and Rooney was supposed to speak to the group. But at the last minute, he backed out. Dozens of people from the Indivisible organization stood outside that meeting holding signs and protesting. They were hoping to get some answers from the congressman and were very disappointed he did not show up. The Republican Club meeting went on as planned, minus Rooney. He was worried that uh, Indivisible might start violent trouble. And he was worried about the people in, in the Nova Republican Club here, too. We have had a year of a lot of things happening in our government. And we believe that we have a lot of questions that have not gotten answered. We believe that we have a right to ask him questions. He is our representative. On Monday, Congressman Rooney announced he will not be seeking re-election in November. Happening right now, Manatee County Sheriff is looking at what can be done to combat the opioid epidemic on the Sun Coast. The Sheriff's Office is meeting with the Bradenton Chapter of Military Officers Association of America. The meeting is timely. In Tallahassee, state lawmakers are debating whether to move forward with a bill that would limit the length of prescriptions for opioids in the Medicaid program to a seven-day supply. Supporters of that House bill say that limit would help prevent patients from getting hooked on painkillers. Time now to get a check on our warm weather here on the Sun Coast yet again today. Meteorologist John Scalzi is here. You know, the mornings when you first get up are pretty nice, but then yeah. it starts to get warm. It does start to get warm. Thank goodness the, the, the relative humidity is still fairly low yeah. because it's not summertime kind right. of humidity. But, but uh, this morning, even though we, uh, we tied the all-time warm temperature low for the morning, if that makes sense, yeah. the warmest the low temperatures get. We tied that, so uh, you know we're on a roll. And today, uh, you know, I, th I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna bust today's daytime high too. So which is 87? 87, yeah. right? And I think we'll probably get to about 88 or so. Wow. Um, I know, I know, and that beat goes on really. Um, we're in a changing world, no doubt about it. We're looking at uh, really blue sky out there currently. Not much in the way of any kind of you know clouds that could produce any rainfall. A few fair weather clouds, but. That's really about it. Plenty of plenty of space for the sunshine to come down through those clouds. The satellite view doesn't show any large scale systems heading our way. And that brown that you see over the eastern seaboard and the Florida Peninsula and down into the tropics, that's all dry air aloft. In other words, rain killer. So we are not going to see any rain showers across our region today. In the uh, next couple of minutes, we'll talk about this record-breaking warmth. We'll talk about the fact that there's no rain in the forecast and whether we could use some. And we'll also talk about the, uh, the fairly sunny skies out there and what that means for our temperatures over the next several days. Back to you, Scott. All right, John, thank you. China is warning that we'll take action if the U.S. puts heavy taxes on steel and aluminum imports. As the Trump administration weighs taking a tougher stance on trade, some American companies are worried about the potential impact on U.S. agriculture. Restrictions on market access could cause some companies to take a hit when it comes to agriculture and technology. They understand very clearly the political pressure points in the U.S., whether it's in Congress or in local state houses, and certainly to the White House. A recent survey shows the majority of U.S. companies in China think trade between both countries is fair. They want things to change, but nobody wants a trade war. Also happening today, Defense Secretary Mattis is expected to present his plan on transgender military participation. This comes after several courts have prevented the administration from reimposing a ban on their service. In September, Mattis said a panel of experts would draw up a new policy by February 21st. There's still no word yet on what that policy will include. Happening in Florida, the parents of an FSU fraternity pledge who died at a party is now filing a civil suit against the national chapter. The suit names Pi Kappa Phi's national chapter and several people, including the nine fraternity members who were charged with criminal hazing after Andrew Coffey's death last year. 
Florida State suspended its fraternities and sororities for nearly three months. Alcohol is still not being allowed at campus functions. The national spokesman for the fraternity has no comment on this lawsuit. And state leaders say Florida is close to replacing the Confederate statue in the U.S. Capitol. The state house approving a bill yesterday and is now headed to the governor's desk where he is expected to sign it. If approved, the statue will be uh, replaced with one of Mary McLeod Bethune. She founded a school that would become a historically black university. Her statue would be the first African-American woman in Statuary Hall. Back to the kitchen now, checking again with Judy and Chef Jamil from Michael's on East who are fixing something delicious for us today. And boy, those people that are going to the Make-A-Wish luncheon are so fortunate because this dish, the aroma of the, the aroma, blue cheese the blue and cheese. the cream with the gnocchi. Now the whole room is going to fill up. The cool thing about, you know, the interactive is that I'm cooking on stage and everybody follows me. As soon as, you know, when I say put the cream on, everybody puts the cream on and it was just, the whole room fills up with such a, Great, great aromas. For a great cause. A great so cause. how long has this been on the burner now? So it's about? been in the burner about, you know, five five to six minutes. And you haven't stirred yeah. it. I you did exactly it. just laid that blue cheese Just move it a little bit. And if you can see it right now, it's boiling a little bit. Almost yeah. It's like a nice white pizza, which is kind of cool. Stop it. So <laughs> right here, what we're going to do, I'm going to add some fresh basil. Oh, yum. And if you can see it right there, on, right on top of it. And then we're just going to do some tomatoes. Now we're going to do the same thing once we put it on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the plate. So now you have a beautiful dish right here mm. that if you can see, now you can stir it. You can, oh, see yeah. the, uh, you can see the cream, it got a little heavy right there. And it's a really easy dish, and it's, you don't need a big portion of this. A big portion. I mean, this is a great little starter exactly. for your dinner party. So right here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to oh. plate it right here. You can yeah. see how creamy it is. You don't want this cream to be too heavy because you already got a very heavy uh, dish with the gnocchis. Yep. So you want a nice little light cream sauce that it goes right there. So, basically, oh. so right there. Now, uh, at my clothes, we went ahead and fried some basil. And literally walk everybody through what they have to do at home to fry basil. So this just is get a little pan so just nice. like this one. Make sure mm -hmm. it's nice and high. Once the, you, you can see the oil smoking a little bit, and you have to be careful because they will spit you uh, spit some water out, and it might little burn you a little bit. And when we did this on the fryer, I did that very quick. And all you do is put them in there for not even 30 seconds. And they're delicious to and, eat, oh, I have yeah. to tell you. It's, it's better than out. a kale chip. And then we're going to do is just add a little more... Gorgonzola, you know, yes. uh, blue cheese right here. A little more tomato. Well, so it's we funny can, uh, that you said gorgonzola. I have a little gorgonzola left over. Can I add that in with the blue cheese at home, or is that too creamy? You know, the gorgonzola actually will be a better... Uh, ah, better, uh, good. Since this is a recipe from Landalosi, we want to make sure we keep it that way. That's right. But if you use gorgonzola, it is actually better, uh, 10 times better than it would be the blue cheese. Because blue cheese is very, very deep. Gorgonzola mm -hmm. is a little lighter. Well, so. I'm going to try this in just a few minutes. It's going to be hard to wait. But come back, we'll take a taste, and we'll remind you about this great event that's happening for Make-A-Wish at Michael's on East. My name is Stefan Campagna. We're Ben Gates and Dramus, and here is your Law Tip of the Week. If you've been injured in an accident, whether or not it's your fault, your insurance company might be responsible for some of your expenses. So give us a call. We've got your back. Today, everyone is looking for carpeting that lasts longer. G Freed has you covered with Karistan. With a legacy of quality and integrity, we provide you with a huge selection of Karistan carpets with exclusive lifetime limited warranties. All installed by our highly skilled, highly knowledgeable team. Come ask us why Karistan is the best and most durable. G Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. If you've never truly loved your car, you've clearly never owned a Subaru. Subaru is Kelly Blue Book's 2017 most trusted brand, best overall brand, and lowest five-year cost to own. And Subaru Impreza is an IIHS top safety pick for 11 years running. Lease the all-new 2018 Subaru Impreza for just $195 a month for 42 months with zero due at signing. That's right, not one penny. Get more for your money during the Subaru True Love event at Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Planning a carnival fantasy cruise out of Mobile? 
Then check out the park and cruise packages at the luxurious Battle House and Renaissance Riverview Plaza hotels. Stay at the Battle House for $169 per night or the Riverview Plaza for just $149 per night and leave your car for the duration of your cruise. Includes transportation to and from the cruise terminal. If you're cruising out of Mobile, come stay with us. Call 1-800-MARRIOTT or visit Marriott.com now. Check out My Sun Coast Dining on MySunCoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC 7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blog, step-by-step -step videos, and Sun Coast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySunCoast.com slash dining. Now your ABC 7 first alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. Yeah, I picked up at about another degree in the last hour or so. We're at 82 now in Bradenton, Lakewood Ranch, Mayaca, Northport, Sarasota, Venice at 7, 83, 83 in Punta Gorda as well, and Inglewood at 81. Lombo Key still the coolest spot with those winds coming in on golf waters, or at least starting to, coming in at 79 right now. 82 Wachula and Arcadia. We are on our way, I think, to breaking another record today. Our record is 87 for a daytime high, and we're going to come pretty close to that. 82 the air temperature. Dew point still comfortable enough. It's at 66 percent. We have a uh, 66. We have a dew point uh, relative humidity at uh, 58 percent. So you know that feels okay. That feels comfortable. It's not summer like sticky, really sticky humidity. Um, east southeast wind coming in at about 13. A mix of sun and fair weather clouds out there. Nothing that's going to produce any rainfall currently. The uh, temperature by the time we get to 3 p.m. will probably be in excess of our. Daytime high record today, coming in at about 88. I wouldn't be surprised. 78 degrees by 7 p.m. Beautiful sunset and storm. Maybe a few fair weather clouds reflecting those golden sunset colors. And I think a pretty quiet night. Might see a little bit of a haze in the atmosphere as you wake up tomorrow morning, perhaps with the moisture around as temperatures fall into the uh, 70s, maybe some 60s in inland areas, upper 60s. So we're looking at this line of showers that stretches across the United States today. There's some very heavy rainfall coming down in parts of the country and transitioning in the colder air, and it's much colder back behind that front, into some uh, freezing rain and even some snow showers. Uh, this frontal boundary is creating excessive rain, and there have been sandbags deployed for the rivers of uh, Illinois and uh, Michigan and Indiana. Upper Midwest really under the gun here for some flooding rains. And down in the south, we could see some severe weather developing in some of these heavier thunderstorms moving into Louisiana at this hour. They'll be watching that very carefully there. The whole frontal boundary associated with this system in no way bothers us. It's going to stall out in North Florida and leave us with this big ridge of high pressure producing this southeasterly wind flow and some very, very pleasant weather. No doubt about it. So the forecast is looking like this. Warm temperatures again today. Great boating weather west at about 5, becoming a little easterly and surging maybe overnight tonight. Two to three foot seas and just a light chop. And the forecast for today tops it out at 88 degrees. Tomorrow just a little bit cooler maybe. And then as we head into Friday and Saturday and Sunday, we'll cool it off further down to about 83, which is still about 10 degrees above average. And I really honestly don't see any cold air coming our way into next week, despite the fact that maybe we get a little bit of a rain chance on Tuesday. Looking at the long range projections toward the end of the month, no cold air. We stay well above average right through the period. Scott. All right, John, thank you. In consumer news, about 35,000 workers at Disney World are demanding the mm. bonuses they say they were promised. Last month, Disney announced a $1,000 bonus for employees, including those represented by unions. But the union now says Disney will only give its workers the bonus if they accept a wage offer that the union has already voted against. That offer was a 50 cent an hour raise over the next two years. When Dixie's parent company is planning to shut down nearly 200 of its stores, Bloomberg reports a southeastern grocer could shut down the stores either before or after a subsidiary of the same Jacksonville company that owns Win Dixie files for bankruptcy. In addition to having nearly a billion dollars in debt, the retailer has also drawn about $284 million from a $900 million credit line. Walmart is reporting smaller than expected fourth quarter profits as it struggled with slower e-commerce sales during the holiday season. The results underscore the company's challenges amid fierce competition. Disappointing profit numbers overshadowed the retailer's better than expected sales at established stores. 
The mixed results could be a sign that Walmart's push to narrow the gap between itself and Amazon is losing some steam. Still to come in your Suncoast News, how a teen with a life-threatening heart condition got the keys to the ride of his dreams. The story when we come back. Motor Trend said the new Alfa Romeo Giulia is hands down the best sports sedan you can buy today. And named it the 2018 Motor Trend Car of the Year. Rediscover your passion for driving at Sunset Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. I just had a very educational ride with Nina. Did you learn anything? Where do I begin? So all this stuff goes into a safety check. Yep. It's a long list. It's important stuff. Test the smoke detector. Yep. Check the breaker box. Yep. Meter the GFCIs. Ground fault circuit interrupters. Why do that? <laughs> Call 888 Sparky. Nina, you make it look easy. Thanks, but don't do it yourself. Who's your guy? I'm Deshauna Barber. In 2016, I was proud to win the title of Miss USA. What makes me just as proud is my service in the U.S. military. In the service, a soldier gains skills and learns values like discipline and leadership. That makes them an asset to any business that hires them. If you're an employer on behalf of Coalition to Salute America's Heroes, remember to hire smart and bet on a vet. Visit saluteheroes.org or call this number to learn more. Tomorrow at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Sun Coast. Hi, I'm Stephanie Webb. And I'm Ray Collins. State College of Florida Manatee Campus is offering a new facility. We'll tell you more about the resources being offered at the State of the Art Library and Learning Center tomorrow on Good Morning Sun Coast. John? We could use some rainfall, and for a lot of folks, I think we could use some cooler temperatures. Will we see any of those around? We'll talk about that bright and early. Tomorrow at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Sun Coast. We're here for you. When it comes to drinking, what do you think moderation is? The U.S. Dietary Guidelines define moderation as up to one drink a day for women and up to two drinks a day for men. So what's a drink? The guidelines say a drink equals 12 ounces of beer, 5 ounces of wine, or a cocktail with 1.5 ounces of distilled spirits. Each contains the same amount of alcohol. Like to learn more? Visit drinkinmoderation.org. Here's something we bet you didn't know. Nearly half of all cancers can be prevented. That's right, half, nearly 50%, mostly by making small everyday changes in your diet and controlling your weight, walking more, eating less, and eating foods that help you and your family to seriously reduce the risk of cancer. And of course, by not smoking. Visit the Cancer Prevention Together We Can website and get a free 30-day planner filled with tips, recipes, stats, and more about protecting your family. Go to prevent50.org. Check out My Sun Coast Dining on MySunCoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC 7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blog, step-by-step -step videos, and Sun Coast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySunCoast.com slash dining. When evaluating the Alfa Romeo Stelvio, Car and Driver Magazine said every crossover should be this good to drive. We agree. Rediscover your passion for driving at Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. Okay, truth be told, I snuck a couple bites off air and it is delicious. I'm going to give you another tip before we go. When you're making a cream with cheeses, mm -hmm. add salt at the end. What, so it doesn't break it? But no, because sometimes cheeses are very salty. Like, for example, very the blue true. cheese is going to be a little salty. I mean, we didn't add no salt to this, and it's already had that beautiful taste to it. Right. So I mean, one of the biggest tips when, I, you know, when we're cooking, at the end, we add the salt, unless it's when we're doing a fish or we're doing something different. But anytime you're going to do a cream with cheese, I always add salt at the end. Brilliant. And I'll just make sure it's not too salty by taking another bite. Now, if you want this recipe so much more, log on to mysuncoast.com, click on dining. You'll get the video, the recipe. Find out about these great events that are happening in our community, like Make-A-Wish, Cooking for a Wish. Mmm. Jamil, you did it again. Thank you. I can't believe this. Thank you. It's a pleasure. And, you know, I know now this particular event, is sold out. Yes. But but it's an annual event. It's an annual so event. So can people, what's the best way? Should people sign up to get your newsletter and things like that in that order to find out information? That would be the best way. You're going to get the Connoisseur Club uh, 
There we go, the connoisseur club. So next year, maybe we'll get them to do it for two days. Enjoy making this at home or enjoy it over at this special event. And good luck to everyone at Make-A-Wish. Guys, I'm going to send it back to you. Thank you both. In entertainment news, country music legend Dolly Parton is set to donate her 100 millionth book from her Imagination Library charity. Uh, Parton's organization mails free books to children from birth until they start school. Parton plans to visit Washington next week for a special presentation at the Library of Congress. The 72-year-old performer has said her father's illiteracy inspired her to start this program back in 1995. Since then, the organization has mailed books to children around the world. So, want to fly to Wakanda? You'll have to travel to Atlanta first. The Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport tweeting a picture of a sign showing the flight to the fictional African nation of Wakanda. The country is featured in the blockbuster hit Black Panther, which keeps smashing box office records. It brought in more than $241 million in the long opening weekend. That's the most of any movie to debut on President's Day weekend. And finally this hour, it was a dream come true for a California teen who has been battling a life-threatening heart condition. Thanks to Make-A-Wish Foundation, Jonas Brait now has one of the coolest cars in town. Brait's family was on hand to see the unveiling of his Acura CL, souped up exactly to his specifications. It has new wheels and, of course, a great sound system to go with all the fancy finishes and the perfect paint job. Brait's family says they hope that uh, that can leave the struggle in the rearview mirror, at least for a little while, and just enjoy the ride ahead. What a cool thing. Wow. That seems to be the theme of our newscast today. Make How wish, fitting huh? today. Yeah. Rebecca is glowing. <laughs> yep, and the, stay cool today if you can, I guess, again, huh? Yeah, I think I will all be interested to see at 5 o'clock Bob's report of the high. All right, see you then, everyone. Stay connected to your clients and new customers using ABC7 Digital Media Services. Our team of professionals provide a wide array of digital services to help you get the most out of your website. We specialize in building and helping you maintain the most effective digital solutions for your business. It's vital that your online presence stands out, so our experts will equip you with the best resources available. Trust ABC7 Digital Media Services to give you the right tools to grow your business. The thought of my sons growing up without me inspired me to quit smoking. I talked to my doctors, and then I threw away all my cigarettes, ashtrays, and lighters. I started exercising instead of smoking. Letting my friends online know I was quitting kept me on track. Staying away from alcohol when I was first quitting was key. I kept on trying, learn something each time. Do whatever it takes. No matter how many times it takes. We did it. You can, too. For free help, visit cdc.gov tips.